Hey everyone, Aaron here, and this is another anime review. We're looking at 91 today, and today's review is of Ruby. Now, I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm going to put this right out there because I know it's going to be an issue that's going to come up either here on the comments or outside. I always hear, you know, Ruby is not considered an anime. I always hear that, and it annoys me to no end, but I'm going to first explain why I think it's considered an anime, why I do consider it an anime. So Ruby was designed by a, name, uh, by a guy named Monty Am, God rest his soul. He passed away, I think, a year ago uh, due, due to some surgical uh, issue that he had. And, you know, Monty Am was a huge fan of, you know, Japanese animation and Japanese culture. He made Ruby with the love of anime behind it. You know, the character models, the character designs, the fights, the, the kind of overall presentation of Ruby was made to embody what anime is. And thus, even though, you know, Rooster Teeth made it, even though it is an American company with, you know, multicultural people, but it, it's still an American-run, you know, organization, a lot of people always say that Ruby can't be considered an anime. Now, to me, I've always been one of those people that really does go into the arguments, what is considered Japanimation, what's considered cartoons. You know, I, I have this argument with my, um, my, my family sometimes when they watch something and they'll say, oh, is this a cartoon? And I'll be like, no, it's anime. And it's like, well, isn't it, you know, isn't anime still a cartoon? No, anime is from Japan. You know, I always get into that argument. But, and I get into it with my friends and family, too. I mean, in general, I get into arguing with a lot of people about this. But I've always respected both mediums, and I'm also one to always state that both mediums are fun. You know, cartoons might be American mates, but there's a lot of cartoons that are really cool out here that, that came out. Regardless, though, Ruby to me is anime. It's always been like that because it's got the heart and soul of anime behind it. And that makes it to me anime, so that's why I'm going to review it. Now, if you guys want to comment below why you agree or disagree, feel free to do that. Just be respectful. I don't want to hear anything stupid because I will delete it. If it's anything really negative or it you know, hurts or offends someone else, I will delete it. You know, I haven't had to do that because I've so far all my subscribers have been really cool. I have no issue with any of you guys, but I'm just saying that if I do see anything pop up like that, you know, you're warned already, okay? All right, so... Now, besides the the kind of mean streak I had to put into that, because I, I don't like I don't like getting mean like that. That's you know it's, it's against my mo. But I had to, you know I just had to set the ground rules. Ruby takes place in the world of Remnant, where our main cast of characters are all girls that are part of Team Ruby. You have Ruby, which is the girl on the left. You have Weiss, Blake, and Yang. Yang is the girl in the yellow. Blake is the you know girl in the black silhouette, and Weiss is the girl in the white silhouette. Now, they are huntresses, with, as, as they're called in the show. They are made to kind of learn how to fight against these creatures that exist in this world. And they have to fight them because they're just getting out of control. Now, what's really cool about the show, though, is I actually really dig the whole kind of atmosphere of everyone. You know, besides Remnant being, I think, a cool world that these enemies called the Grim exist in, I actually dig the way it kind of blends a mixture of anime and somewhat fantasy elements that you see more in the western atmosphere you know a remnant kind of reminds me of something you'd almost see in like lord of the rings concepts you know with the you know beings of uh, fairy tales and if actually and realistically i forgot to even mention this a lot of these characters are kind of based off of fairy tales in, in many ways i mean ruby rose red riding hood essentially because her way she looked you have yang who's like you know us uh, goldilocks you know, that, I, don't, I don't make it sound cornier than it is, but it does have that feeling to it, you know, and, and all these characters can kind of be put to that. So I think that's a really kind of nice mixture. But the main set, uh, part of season one, and by the way, I, I will talk about season two because I'm reviewing both season one and two with this. Season one, the main concept is just to get the characters out of the way. You meet other characters, like Joan of Arc, essentially, you know, he's, he's not really, she's a dude this time, it's not a girl, but it's that's what he's trying to go for. You meet, um... Various other characters that I'm not going to name all of them because there's, there's plenty of them that you meet. But they all have their quirks and they're kind of different personas. And I really like that about this show. Now, the first season, one thing that hinders it from being, I think, great was that it didn't have a lot of money put into it. You can see, clearly see that. You know, I, I don't really fully uh, expect that this show was going to be great the first season animation-wise because it's a, it was a new IP, you know. Rooster Teeth is the people behind Red Dress Blue, if you've never seen that show, it's like Machinimation, which was about Halo and such like that. 
and they've made a lot of money off stuff like that. They made money off of other shows too. They have like the Strangerhood and stuff. But you know, you notice it that every show they've ever had, they've always started with a lower budget, and then when it's gotten popular and shows that it has potential to grow, that's where the strength comes in, and that's where the money and funding comes in. Likewise, in season two, you can see clear as day that animation was really stepped up. You can see the money was put into it more. And it's not that I, I want to say that the money is the only guiding factor to being a show being good. I'm just saying that it helped present what was amazing already in a better and stronger fashion. Now, the first season just, again, deals with the main characters, you know, kind of introducing them, introducing the world of Remnant, introducing grim enemies, the actual main enemies of the show, and, you know, who's going to be the big players. The second season is more of the same, but more so now it's the kind of feeling that you get out of the freshman year of high school. And if you understand that, like if you've become a sophomore recently, you understand what I'm getting at where it's still, you're still learning the ropes. You know, our, our girls are still kind of learning what they are made out of, but they know now that they're settled in, you know, they know that they can fight. They know they can win against certain enemies. They know what to expect, but also they still have that cockiness in them. They, they, they think they're unstoppable. And they learn that in second season that they might not be unstoppable. They might have to deal with things both internally and externally. Which I really dig. I actually really like season two. I think season two is a lot better than the first season. Now, season three, I'm not going to review, but I'll, I'll give you guys a really quick heads up with it. It is leaps and bounds better than first season and second season combined. Where now, because it's so popular, because Ruby is really getting some popularity on the online world, it actually has big anime voice actors like Vic Mignogna and Yuri Lowenthal to, to, to put into the cast. And that is cool. I mean, that, that just shows you that they're really trying to put the show strong. Even though Matiam, you know, died, they really want to make the show something that he can have as a legacy. And I really dig that. I, I really appreciate that. I think I think all the fans of the show appreciate that to some point. But Ruby, well, I'm going to put combined season one and two. I'm going to combine the reviews for it. If I had to give it an overall score of an A through F, I have to give it a B plus. You know, Ruby has some issues. Again, the animation's not that great sometimes. And sometimes you can see where the budget is highest, and you sometimes can see where it's the lowest. Um, Pacing-wise, it does have issues. I think a lot of the characters are, at times, a little awkwardly paced. I think that, you know, Ruby in herself is always going to be the main character who stays the same. She grows up in, as the course of the show progresses, but her growing up is not that noticeable. Like, I, you know, three seasons in... You, you don't notice that much of a growth over there. The first two seasons, you notice a little bit here and there, but it's not that pronounced. It's something that I think that's what they're trying to go for. They're trying to keep her at that, you know, innocent heart level. And I just wonder if that's going to work forever, how long the show's going to be. Uh, Weiss, as a main character, is really the biggest one who I think out of these three is one of the bigger growth characters, just like Blake, who these two are growing, you know, beside their, their exterior kind of start point where... Weiss was very kind of soloist in the first season. The second season, she becomes a real good teammate. And third season, as of now, is she's like best friends with Ruby, essentially, even though they kind of clash with each other once in a while. But I really, you know, I, I dig where the show is going. I really do. I think the show is a must-watch for anyone who loves anime or loves, I, I want to say, stuff that has the heart of anime. Because that's what Ruby, to me, has. It has the feelings of, you know, we know we're not... A Japanese-based company. We know that you know Matiyama when he made this was not making this just to be another anime clone. He was trying to make this beautiful, trying to take the best of action storytelling and just art and throw it together. It hits high notes, it hits low notes. It's to be expected with a show type like this. But I would highly recommend checking this out. You can buy it easily on Blu-ray. It's not that much. I think like each season's like 15 bucks. You know, from the website, uh, from Amazon, from Walmart. You, I've seen this everywhere. To be honest with you, it's really cool. But yeah, definitely check out Ruby. And as always, guys, that's it for this review. Um, please like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed it. Again, remember, guys, keep the comments nice. I mean, you guys, I don't really have to tell you that guy that often. I really don't because I know for a fact that all of you are very respectable to one another. But I'm just saying that if I do see anything pop up from this, because I'm, I'm figuring that I might get a bigger audience with this review. If not, you know, at least a little bit of bigger audience. I just want to make sure that everyone knows, hey, listen, just be respectful. That's all. Anyways, guys, until I pass across again in the next review, have a good one, everyone. Bye.